the quarters and I'm headed to the arcade. I don't have a lot of money, but I'm bringing everything I made. I got a canvas on my finger and my shoulders hurting too. Okay, everybody, welcome back. We're going to go over Chapter 2, Office Investigator, Investigator's Office and Laboratory. Some of the things we're going to be looking at today involve, let's get rid of that, <laughs> involve some of the coolest tools I've ever seen, uh, the Forensic Falcon, and then there are several of them. Take a look at the product tour on Forensic Falcon. You'll find out why it's so cool. The physical requirements of the uh, Forensics Lab, certifications for a Forensics Lab, criteria for selecting Forensics workstations and components used to build business cases and developing a Forensics Lab, either in business or in others. Don't forget this week we're going to have Chapter 2's lecture, Chapter 2's hands-on assignment, the review, which you have to make a 70 on or better before you can jump to review our Chapter 2 quiz. So with that being said, let's get started on our lecture, right? Chapter 2 is the investigator's office and laboratory. So we're first off, we're going to start off by describing the certification, physical requirements, criteria, and components used to build cases. In your forensics lab, you should store your evidence there and conduct your investigation as well as house any equipment, hardware, or software you need. That will also include software licenses as many softwares have very strict licensing laws and rules. The AC, uh, ASCLD offer certification guidelines for managing a lab certifications, functions, procedures. If you are a lab manager, now we're going to go into the duties of managers and staff. Manager is going to set up the process for managing cases, promote group consensus and decision making, fiscal responsibilities, ethical standards, updates, establish and promote quality assurance processes, uh, set reasonable, reasonable production schedules, estimate how many cases an individual investigator can handle, or maybe even a team. The duties continue on with the ability to estimate the uh, when to expect preliminary and final results, create and monitor policies, provide a safe and secure workplace. If you're a staff working for a said manager, you'll need to be knowledgeable in the hardware and software operating systems, deductive reasoning, and uh, your work would regularly be reviewed by that manager. ASCLD website has additional information. For lab budget and planning, you have to break it down to daily, quarterly, and annual expenses. A lot like managerial. Uh, if you worked for a manager in the past, they did this. You just may not have realized how it was broken down. All right, so investigation techniques in the past help you figure out what you're going to do for the future. Then you also have to extrapolate into the percent increase that you may see or may need to take into um consideration. All right, hardware, software, facility space, training personality, uh, training personnel, all part of the budget. All right, so you'll identify the types of computer you're likely to examine and maybe you need to take into account those changes to technology. Tablets weren't a thing 10 years ago, but everybody touches a tablet or a smartphone. So what's the one thing that you can pull from it using old style techniques? You can pull fingerprints from the screen itself or the case or surrounding uh, the body of the, the actual device itself. Everybody's got to hold on to it. Um, there aren't many people that use, um, there, are, there are gloves that you can use that register the tactile sense from the fingerprint, as well as those little pins that you see for sale at the gas stations that are like 50 cents and they always tear up. But most people use your finger because that's that's the most readily available thing you have to, to, to use. So you can pull fingerprints from those devices if you use a uh, fingerprint dusting powder. Statistics on what type of crime um, on, on what type of computer you're likely to see in your geographical region could be different for each area. 
and use this information to plan for your lab requirements and costs ahead of time. Uniform Crime Report is a great place to figure out the statistics. The Uniform Crime Report will tell you every crime committed in every region, every city, and it will break it down and you can really get a sense of what you're looking at. So if you haven't had a chance to do so, definitely take a look at the FBI, Gov, UCR, UCR, HTML. And that link may change. So if you always Google Uniform Crime Report, you'll find the right link. All right, sometimes specialized software comes into effect. Identifying those crimes help you plan for the future as well. Hardware, software, inventory, problems reported last year, and future developments in computing technology. So it's important to stay current. And the best way to stay current is through uh, subscribing to newsletters, attending seminars, uh, watching virtual seminars, uh, there are a hundred different ways to look at that and some really exciting things come out and they always present on those. So it's really, really fun. Time management is also a major issue when considering what to do. All right. So if you look at what we're looking at right away, okay, and this is just an example for 2016. Um, it's not one specifically to any area, but if you look at it, well, what do we have? We have, if you look at the total from everything, from gambling, weapons, extortion, blackmail, arson, child pornography, you see that if you look at the right-hand column, you see that there's going to be one major one that's going to fall into it. Stalking, fraud, drug narcotics, and child pornography. Those make up the majority of your cases. So if you're looking at this UCR, what you want to do is gear towards those because they're going to come at you the most frequently. But if you look at the totals down at the bottom column, hard drives 157, Windows OS 86, 7 Linux, 28 Mac, 1 other, 165 mobile devices. So your system should gear towards what? Mobile devices, hard drives, and Windows. Linux and Mac they're part of it, but if you look at the grand total of it, not so much. And what's really interesting throughout this whole thing is just the different types of things. Like I, for example, I want to know what that one embezzlement case was for that other hardware. That sounds exciting. All right, like we talked about uh, updating your skills, research the requirements, costs, and acceptability of area of employment. So if you go for let's say for example, uh, Linux, when we go back to say, UCR, if you specialize your entire department in Linux, but you mostly deal in Windows and Mac and mobile, that probably doesn't help you so much. All right, International Association of Computer Investigative Specialists is a certificate credentials for those that are looking to go for the Certified Forensics Computer Examiner, C. FCE. There are many CEs, by the way, or FCEs, Forensic Examiners and Forensics Computer Examiners, um, that are going to pull out here that you can that you can see. There are just tons of them that you can go different ways. Um, Access Data has one. Pro uh, FTK does. Um, in Case has one. There are there are tons of them. Some of them are actually relatively inexpensive, and we'll go over that later in the course. How uh, I can actually show you where to get one for free. It's called the ACE. I think it's Access Certified uh, Examiner. Access Data is the uh, manufacturer or publisher or the people that do this, the software. All right, ISC Certified Professional. requires knowledge of forensics, analysis, incident response, e-discovery, and any other disciplines they think they need. It changes as it goes. HTCN, another verse. There's that in-case coming up again. Now, the in-case forensics software license, whew, man, that is like $2,000 a pop. This one is free, by the way. This is the free one. And it does require you have access data ultimate toolkit, which is, again, um, free to a point. It doesn't give you everything, but it gives you enough that you can pass that. And then the exam is the knowledge-based assessment and then the practical skills assessment, which they both give you 
The knowledge base is just multiple choice and practical skills. They give you a file that you have to uh, extrapolate and run forensics on. So it's really cool and it's free. So if you're still interested in that, that's what we want to look at is that ACE, um, Google ACE for um, access data. EC Council sysadmin SANS, there are tons of these out there. Uh, more as we go along, I mean, just it keeps going and keeps going. So another good example is if your department doesn't use access data for its examinations or, and you use in case, doing access data ACE doesn't benefit your department at all. While it is free, you for the certification for access data, which, by the way, is $6,000 a person for the certification. Um, we go along determining physical requirements. All right, this is where that video in the beginning comes in really cool. All right, you want to make sure that secure evidence is kept secure. It's not lost or corrupted or destroyed, that it's safe and secure in a physical environment. If you have a lot of computers, your fire suppression system should not be what? It should not be water. You can use halon. You can use CO2. You can use anything else that's safer for computers. Now, not necessarily safer for humans, but safer for computers at least. All right. So keeping an accurate inventory, letting you know what you've got. If something gets damaged, it gets logged inventory, you can repair it when it comes time or when your budget allows. You should be having a secure facility, meaning you preserve that integrity. Then there are small rooms uh, with true floor to ceiling walls. Can't jump. Some drop ceilings you can, so that's not secure. A door with a locking mechanism, securing containers, visitors log. People working together should have the same access levels. If somebody's higher access level, they go to their own area versus having low access people with high access people in the same room. It introduces contamination. Making sure your staff is aware of that as well. All right, high risk investigations demand more security. Tempest facilities are electromagnetic radiation proofed. So, in Breaking Bad, Walter White drives a heavy ma electromagnetic uh, magnet to the radio uh, to the evidence room. Now, if it was in a Tempest facility, it would be proofed for that. You could not have that radiation pull into that room and, and suck all the laptops, wipe all the data. If it was a proofed facility, it's possible that that small area, although it was a DEA facility, uh, was not well equipped for that, or it was not, uh, it was a temporary storing housing unit. There are tons of different options that it could be. All right. The, uh, Downside is, obviously, they are very expensive. Evidence lockers are basically, they're not shelves. They are lockers. So again, that would have worked against the Breaking Bad scenario that we talked about earlier. All right. Locating them in a restricted area, number of authorized people is limited. Records are there. Chain of custody is very important and should remain locked. If the combination locking system is used, the same level of security uh, combination as the container's contents. Destroy any previous combinations after setting up a new combination so it has to be changeable. And only authorized personnel managers would be a great person to change that. Combinations should be changed every six months or when required. And if you're a keyed padlock, a coin, a key custodian, stamp sequential numbers on duplicate keys, maintain a registry list of them who's supposed to have it, conduct audits, inventory those keys, place them in a lockable container, maintain the same level of security, and change locks or keys annually. Containers should be hard steel, and if possible, acquire a media safe, build evidence storage lab, keep your records, keep logs, facilitating, overseeing the facility maintenance is basically pretty simple, right? Keep it clean, Keep it free of physical damage. Use anti-static pads. 
uh, use trash for sensitive materials and unrelated. So like candy wrappers, that kind of stuff will go in materials unrelated. But if it is a document that you are filling out and, oh, you made a mistake and it's easier to just do an entire new form, that sensitive material form needs to go in a shred bin or something specialized that is locked, that is carried out or either done on, on facility or you have contracted a secure like shred it is one of the ones that you'll see that's very popular. They're like blue containers that the company will come in and they will actually remove it in a locked container, replace another locked container, take it to their specialized, it's like a big high-end facility where they shred all documents. They don't even look at them. They don't bother with it. They just shred everything. All right. Um, alternatively, there are people that do this for hard drives too. It's really crazy expensive, and you can ship drives to them, and they actually physically shred the drive, uh, or you can have them come to you. That's where it gets expensive, like $2,000 trip fee. And then every drive thereafter is 100 something dollars for them to send it into a metal shredder. All right, so that those security policies like a sign-in log, escort all visitors, use visitor badges, intrusion alarms, a guard force for your lab, Auditing these forensics um, labs ensures proper enforcing of policies, and they should include inspections for ceiling, floor, roof, exteriors, locks, logs, evidence logs, and then at the end of every day, secure any evidence that's not being processed. Nothing's left out that's not working overnight. Some of these scans take forever. Some of these imaging takes a long time as well. Configure your work area depends on your budget floor space available, and the number of computers you have to assign. The ideal configuration is two forensics workstation and one non-forensics workstation with internet access. And you don't use these forensic workstations to get internet access. So if you need to Google something, can't do it on that forensics workstation because it has to remain intact, clean, and unaltered. If you accidentally get a virus or download something, access, you don't want it to contaminate your forensics workstation. Small labs generally have one or two forensics workstations with one research computer and a workbench, if space allows. Storage cabinets. And here's a typical uh, forensics lab. Small one, albeit, right? You've got your one internet PC, one forensics PC. If you look, you see that we've got a network connection coming from the wall going to that internet PC. All right, but nothing for forensics. It's illustrated that way on purpose. We have one locking cabinet on the upper left, one unlocked cabinet lower left. Down to the lower right, we've got our bench with everything out. At the end of the day, those two hard drives you see on the table would not be left out. They would go into either the locking cabinet or unlocking cabinet. It's got to go to the locking cabinet. Mid-sized labs are going to be big deals. They're going to be a little bit more expensive, obviously. They can contain cubicles, library space, workstations, more of them, and two exits for safety reasons. Big one, right? We've got the two internet PCs on the far right. And these workstations are for forensics. We've got the locking cabinets. You'll notice those are two locking cabinets. And our bench. All right. State law enforcement, the FBI runs most of the large and regional digital forensics. They have separate evidence rooms, custodians, and two controlled accents with no windows. And here's a big one. At our evidence room that's locked, our workbenches that are locked, forensics workstations that are locked, internet PC not locked, and a big conference table, and individual offices down the lower area. We've got our one entrance and two entrance. All right. A forensics workstation has got to bend on your budget and needs powerful workstations for mundane tasks, are less powerful and multi-purpose for resource-heavy analysis tasks. Police labs have some of the most diverse needs for computing investigation tools. A small local police department might have one multi-purpose forensic workstation with two general purpose workstations. Use laptops with FireWire, USB, SATA to create a light work, uh, lightweight mobile workforce uh, 
forensic solution. Now, that Falcon one that we talked about or that we have the video for, really cool, and it's totally mobile. Not quite a laptop, but it's a little bit more as well because it does connect to a network, which makes it really, really cool, and you'll get to see that. It's everything, all the features about it. You can also watch the video. I think she links to it where the newest one is out, and that's even cooler. So uh, businesses conducting internal investigations, hardware and operating systems are needed taken to um, need to figure that out. Working from a Windows PC that can examine both Windows and Mac drives. That's a big, crucial feature there. In stock. Probably not so common, but it's still a good idea to have. And besides it, they're cheap anyways. IDE cables, ribbon cables for floppy disks, USB 3 cables, SATA cables, SATA cards, SCSI cards, SCSI cables, graphics cards, PCI, AGP. You probably won't find AGP cards anymore or come across an issue where you'll need AGP. But in the event, you'll get an entire machine. After you image it, you want to do anything with it. And the video has failed. PCI and AGP are going to be your go-tos to replace and, and force that through. Firewire, USB adapters, hard drives, two IDE notebook drives with an IDE, ATA, or SATA adapter. And, of course, a myriad of different hand tools. Licensed copies you probably want to grab. Office, Quicken, programming languages like Visual Basic, uh, Specialized Viewers, Quick View, LibreOffice, OpenOffice, Apache OpenOffice. Those are your free offices. Peachtree and QuickBooks. Now, if you remember back from the crime statistics, some of them were embezzlement. Some of them may deal with where? Quicken, QuickBooks, Peachtree. Those are accounting applications that you may need to have licenses for because it's not, you can't really use your, the, the company that asking you to do the investigation, you can't use their license because there may be some sort of corruption involved in that as well. To go outside of that, that's where you want to go. Disaster recovery plans, virus contaminations, reconfigurations, catastrophic situations, fire, earthquake, floods, those guys need to be part of your disaster recovery plans backup tools, RAID servers, software or hardware RAID are some of the more common RAIDs. Um, not a big fan of software RAIDs, but I can see the benefit of it. For example, if you have a hardware RAID disk failure and you're not mirroring or backing it up somewhere else, if that hardware disk, hard disk fails, you have to either one, rebuild the RAID array Hopefully you did it with parity, so you can. Or two, you've lost everything. Rebuilding a RAID array from the parity bits takes a long time. If software RAID fails, all you typically have to do is restart the software or reconfigure the software and you're back up in a matter of minutes versus hours slash days for a RAID physical. It's very tricky. RAID configurations. It's always something you have to figure out in your disaster recovery plan. Keeping track of updates is another uh, disaster configuration that you'll need to go through. Uh, High-end RAID servers, methods for restoring large data sets, large end servers must have ad adequate data backup systems in case of major failure or loss of more than one drive. Risk management determines how much risk is assess acceptable. Identifying equipment for the lab may need to be periodically replaced. Identifying equipment you can replace when it fails. Computing components in the 18 to 16, 36 months last about 18, 36 months. Schedule upgrades at least every 18 months and preferably every 12 months. Another thing, it keeps you current with your technologies as well. All right. Building a business case is a problem because budget. In a business environment, they don't really have a lot of use for forensics. So that cost for that lab is probably going to be very low. 
the way that you can argue that with your supervisors or executives is to say, what is the cost of this investigation compared with the cost of a potential lawsuit? Don't you want to protect your trade secrets, business plans, and intellectual property? Having a way to determine who's taking what where is going to be crucial in protecting those intellectual properties. All right, what's available for as far as facilities, tools, supplies, and training? How do you justify that? And what are the required constraint efforts? Facility cost, hardware, software, miscellaneous budgets. You have to present your case to the upper management for approval. So uh, things that you'll need to implement, is to describe how they'll be used, to show a timeline of when they'll be delivered, what the installation dates are, and what the completion dates would be. Inspection dates for your manager or executive to look at to see how it's going so that they feel better about it. If you don't have support from your stakeholders, all stakeholders, and stakeholders is anybody associated to the project, which would include management, yourself, and any employee. If you don't have support from your stakeholders, then you won't have a successful project. All right, acceptance testing, testing everything essentially. Correction for accept, acceptance is basically before you go into lab production, you anticipate those problems and fix them before it goes into production. Once it's in production, you then have to maintain it. If you remember the SRDC life cycle, that's part of this whole production maintaining all right and in summation where you conduct your investigations the forensics lab where you store it in your storage lockers upgrading your skills through training and lab faculty facility must be physically secure so that we don't lose evidence corrupt destroy or lose it uh, it's harder to plan for a computer forensics lab for a police department than a private organization or corporation because they don't have to adhere to all the federal guidelines, but they do have the, the, the disadvantage of having it cost more. Uh, typically, executives won't foot the bill for that because it doesn't make a lot of sense. Forensics workstations need to have adequate memory storage and ports to deal with common types of cases that come through the lab and prepare a business case to enlist the support of your managers and other team members when building your forensics lab. So that is it for our broadcast this week. I will see you guys next week.